I'm Harry Smith. Welcome to Eye to Eye. Katie Couric is on assignment. A virtual epidemic that plagued the online game World of Warcraft has become a model for studying infectious disease in real life. CBSNews.com's Tony Masillis spoke to the study's co-author about what this means for the medical community. You said, and I've read some of your interviews, that this is actually one of the most realistic examples that you've seen from that sort of computer-generated world. Absolutely. Why? Well, first of all, the disease originated in a remote region, so the equivalent of, of sort of a zoonotic or coming from animal infection in, in, let's say, a jungle region where very few people would be likely to go. But a couple of explorers in the game world got there, were exposed to the disease, and then brought it back with them to urban centers in the game. So they actually brought something that the normal uh, people living in most of the game would never have seen into exposing that, that urban community, and then it spread from there. Uh, also, there were pets that could get it, and they didn't have any symptoms, but they could transmit it so much in the same way that we worry about avian flu, right. uh, not necessarily always being asymptomatic in birds, but being the continued reintroduction through the animal vectors. We saw all of that in this disease, so it was really quite cool. I thought it was interesting that you said in one of your interviews that the thing that this study takes into account is the stupid factor. What exactly That's is gonna the haunt stupid me. factor? Um, so this was actually, someone asked me if there were any behaviors that we saw that surprised me as an epidemiologist. And so in, in epidemiology, a subfield is to study behavioral epidemiology. What does the impact of human behavior have on the spread of disease? And so we've tried to focus in that on what behaviors we think would most affect an epidemic, and we've tried to look at control strategies. Mm -hmm. And one of the big ones is quarantine. Everyone's asking, okay, well, if we know there's an outbreak in this city, what happens if we make sure no one comes in or out? What happens if we close down the schools? Things like that, things that re require compliance from an affected population. And so there have been some really great studies looking at what happens if people don't all obey the suggested public health intervention. But the stupid factor that we saw in the game was something totally different of unaffected populations getting curious and then sure. a, being willing to take on that risk. Kind of like when there's an accident on the road and people right, slow and up people and rubberneck, rubberneck or yeah. they tend to gravitate toward those sorts Exactly. Of and so it was that kind of, well, I don't know how risky it is, but maybe it's worth it just to go take a look. It seems like something new and unusual. And so they were willing to assume that risk to their characters to show up. And now that we've seen that in the game, it just seems up. If there was one takeaway lesson that you would want to share with people who might be watching to try to learn something about this, what would you say the headline is on this study? Why is it something that you care about? Um, well, we really care because people are bad at estimating their own behaviors and their own hypothetical emotional responses to stress. And there are some kinds of stress that we can approximate safely. But societal level group risk really isn't one of them. And so the take home message for me is that this is plausibly, I think now that we've thought of it, going to be the best way to approximate a real emotion, a risk to something that someone is emotionally invested in and look at that uh, in a group structure and look at that social population and, and really try and understand how people behave as societies when they are communally at risk. And so I think this is going to be the best new experimental setup for that.